Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, here where we discuss topics of the appeal process, where it's going, where it has been, and give our opinions about what we feel about the singer um, in a positive way. Thank you so much for being here. So as of March 30th, 2022, we do have an update for you. At 11.41 a.m., Matt Masterson, which is the publicist for WTTW Crime and Law, writes that R. Kelly's attorneys has sought to delay sentencing in the New York case until after Chicago trial. So the attorney for convicted R&B singer R. Kelly is asking a federal judge to delay his sentencing until after his Chicago trial later this year. Um, his trial was supposed to take place May 4th, arguing that she wouldn't be able to, that the courts would not be able to protect Robert Sylvester Kelly's constitutional rights without compromising his Fifth Amendment rights. So let's look at what a constitutional right is actually is. So the Bill of Rights is the first 10 amendments to the Constitution spelling out Americans' rights in relation to their government, guaranteeing civil rights and liberties to the individual like freedom of speech, press, and religion. It sets rules for due process of law, so how the law should be set down, and reserves all powers not delegated to the federal government to the people of the states, and it's specifically enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to be denied or disparage others retained by the people. So the First Amendment talks about the freedom of speech, press, assemble, protest, and religion. We're allowed, the, the, the government cannot you know, come in and change any of that. The second amendment is the right to keep and bear arms. The third amendment prevents government from forcing homeowners to allow soldiers to use their homes. Before the Revolutionary War, laws gave British soldier, soldiers the right to take over private homes. The fourth amendment bars the government from unreasonable search and seizure of any individual or their private property. The Fifth Amendment provides several protections for people accused of crime. This is where R. Kelly's Fifth Amendment could possibly be taken advantage of. The Fifth Amendment provides several protections for people accused of crimes. It states that serious criminal charges must be started by a grand jury. A person cannot be tried twice for the same offense, double jeopardy or have property taken away without just compensation. People have the right against self-incrimination and cannot be imprisoned without due process of law, a fair procedure and trial. So we're gonna stop there because his Fifth Amendment right is where we're looking at. But um, there are actual 10 and you can Google those and see what the government cannot do. Um, well, let me just keep going. So the Sixth Amendment right provides additional protections to people accused of crimes, such as a speedy trial and a public trial, trial by an impartial jury, a public trial. Um, R. Kelly was not given that public trial. Um, it was public, but the media was not able to be in there, so we couldn't see everything that was going on. The Seventh Amendment extends the right to a jury trial in federal civil cases. Yes. Um, the Eighth Amendment has bars excessive bail and fines and cruel and unusual punishment. The Ninth Amendment states that um, it has that list the specific rights in the Constitution does not mean that people do not have other rights that have not been spelled out. And the Tenth Amendment is the power delegated, says that the federal government only has powers delegated in the Constitution. If it isn't listed, it belongs to the states or to the people. So attorney Bon Jean is on point when she says that there's no way that we can sentence 
Robert Sylvester Kelly if he has other cases pending in the same offense. And to do so would be a double jeopardy because he would be tried twice for the same crime. So then that means that he's going to get more time, more, 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 more piled on. So this is what the game was from the very beginning. Um, Kelly 55 is currently scheduled to be sentenced on his racketeering convictions in New York, May 4th, 2022. So a motion was recently filed by attorney uh, Jennifer Bonjean to Judge Ann Donnelly, the defense attorney in the case, stating that she has grave concerns that if the sentencing on May 4th goes forth before his Chicago case um, goes to trial, it could interfere with Mr. Kelly's Fifth Amendment guarantees. To put a finer point on it, under, undersigned counsel cannot advise Mr. Kelly to be examined or interviewed by a mitigation. So to be interviewed is to put him on trial. And if you remember, he's already pled the Fifth Amendment. So um, let's look at mitigation, what that means, mitigation. The purpose of mitigation is to identify measures that safeguard the environment and the community affected by the proposal. Mitigation is both, both a creative and practical phase of the criminal justice process. It seeks to find the best ways and means of avoiding, minimizing, and remedying impacts. According to Public Defender Services, mitigation is a complex, multi-pronged approach to preparing for sentencing for a defendant's crime with a goal of reducing or lessening the effects of aggravating factors. So that means that um, mitigating circumstances are factors that tend to lessen this severity. So to lessen it, mitigating circumstances might include a defendant's young age, mental illness or addiction or minor role in a crime. And this is what we were talking about the whole time. If you go back and look at, listen to some of the podcasts that we've shared with you, his disability was never taken into consideration, never. So this is a good point, Jennifer. Let's not even talk about the sexual addiction that took place within his life at a very young age that was never ever counseled, that was never taken into consideration to make him believe that possibly this was a way of life and this was supposed to be how it was. Maybe he was ignorant to the fact, um, especially if he had just got out of the situation in 2008 and then repeated itself in 2021. Not making excuses, but Let's take that deeply into consideration. Now, to put a finer point on it, undersigned counsel cannot advise Mr. Kelly to be examined or interviewed by a mitigation expert for sentencing in this case if his words might be used against him in some manner at his pending Northern District of Illinois trial. Bonjean wrote, Mr. Kelly should not have to compromise his Fifth Amendment rights in his pending criminal case in Nor Northern District of Illinois to develop and present comprehensive mitigation evidence in the instant case. So he would perjure himself. So these are some of the reasons why a lot of people don't use counselors because the very thing that you use to share in counseling sessions at this point could be held against you. It The information, if R. Kelly has been, Robert Sylvester Kelly has been in counseling and he's been opening up, all of that information could be used against him. Now, according to the HIPAA laws, and that is the, the confidentiality clauses of medical um, companies and selling information, doctors, you know, selling information, the HIPAA law prevents that. And so... Confidentiality is very important here. And I see where Bonjean is going when she's saying, listen, right now, this could be a bigger situation and we want to just nip it in the bud from where it started and then 
you know, cut down the branches as people tend to believe what they want to believe on the negative end of the situation. There's so much more here. There's mental health, there's evaluations, there's psychiatric treatments, there are um, sexual addictions, there are control issues, there are mental health issues and physical health you know, paradigms that need to be challenged here. And it wasn't in the first trial. So if Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly gets examined by a mitigating expert, he meaning the investigator, the mitigating investigator, um, he will be able to switch all of Robert Sylvester Kelly's words all around. He's going to know how to switch those words around. Bonjean wrote, Mr. Kelly should not have to compromise his Fifth Amendment rights in this pending trial in the North Northern District of Illinois to develop and present comprehensive mitigation evidence in the instant case. A New York jury found Kelly guilty of nine counts, including racketeering on his second day of deliberations last September. The following month, U.S. District Judge Harry Lennon Weber ordered Kelly to stand trial in Chicago on child pornography and obstruction of justice charges in August 2022. Following his conviction, Kelly faces the possibility of decades in prison for the crimes, including violating the Mann Act, an anti-sex trafficking law that prohibits taking anyone across state lines for any immoral purpose. Bonjean argued that federal prosecutors are not prejudiced by pushing back the New York sentencing by three months. They're just asking for 90 days to, you know, get the, get everything in order. That's all they're asking. Mr. Kelly is facing a serious and lengthy sentence of imprisonment. He should not have to overgo pres presenting mitigating evidence at his sentencing hearing out of fear that his words could be used against him at his upcoming trial. Kelly, who was born Robert Sylvester Kelly, is also facing four separate indictments alleging sexual abuse in state court in Chicago and a child prostitution charge in Minnesota. He continues to be held at a federal lockup in Brooklyn. Now I want to take you to a clip of an interview that was done online and I will have the full interview in the description box below. But I want you to listen to what Judge Joe Brown had to say about the R. Kelly sentencing and the process behind why attorney Jennifer Bonjean is the best thing for him at this point. I don't really agree with everything he's saying, but let's listen. I'm going to get your point. Here we go. Well, let me say this. When the accusation involves sexual misconduct against a woman, it's always a smart move to have a woman as your advocate. Okay. Next thing is see there's a thing called reciprocity in law where lawyers who are not admitted to a given state's bar can practice on a limited basis there if they associate legal counsel you might want to put up a team that is very conversant with the procedures quirks and special situations that attend defense in another jurisdiction, particularly in the federal system in that jurisdiction. And it helps if you have somebody representing you who is very knowledgeable. So I'm not surprised by this and people shop around. Uh, he's already got the convictions under his belt that he's going to have to answer to. So why not get a fairly attractive female lawyer? You well, I mean, she may have an attractive personality. Okay. You may wind up with a better result, especially if she looks like the jury looks to the likely to look to the jury in a fashion that reminds them of the victim. In other words, you see, she's older. She's got the lean look, and that's going to match the appearance of some of the victims when they come in in terms of their mothers. So she's going to have the appearance of a mother 
and a mother defending a man against a tran alleged transgression against another woman has a very interesting effect on a jury. And I noticed that when I tried rape cases, sexual assault cases, and stuff like that, that that's a good move. And he's got nothing to lose. And because right. she is an appellate lawyer, she's conversant with the law, certainly, and has the law at her beck and call, which isn't always the case with some of our now notorious famous lawyers right. and I don't know how she works in front of a jury I, I have no idea but it's not necessarily a bad move I told you long before it happened and everybody else that would listen that the fact that Cosby got convicted was an absolute travesty and the judge punked out that's the only way to deal with it I guess he wanted to keep getting laid by his wife, who was a zealous feminist. He lost control of his courtroom. He let it be taken over. He didn't control what was going on outside. He let naked women run around trying to advertise that Cosby had to go. He didn't control his jury panel. And he didn't apply the law. And the fact that the DA was allowed to completely violate the Fifth Amendment, the right to be free from self-incrimination, and get away with it to the point where Cosby was held in prison for almost two years. The fact that the trial judge took almost uh, three quarters of a year to get in something he had 60 days to file, which was another delay to ensure that Cosby served more time. The fact that he didn't have the cojones to let Cosby out of jail on bond or allow him to remain on bond pending appeal was just an absolute travesty and injustice. I was embarrassed. So, yeah, the, the appellate lawyer applied the law, and it was inevitable that any decent group of judges would have let Cosby go because of the just insanely bad violations of the U.S. Constitution that were attended upon his conviction. It was mob justice at its worst. Worst. I mean, you're innocent till you're proven guilty, but uh, what was the lady that got killed and the young lady that got killed in the airplane wreck because it was improperly balanced? Leah, he still has to explain how he wound up marrying uh, Aaliyah as a child. Hey, you have problems. I had, well, one doctor we know analyzed that and said he's got some problems because... He allegedly is illiterate. He can't read. And he had a problem with sexual advances, he says, and she says, from his older sister. And that matches a classic profile of a grown man not able to commensurate with and interact with a grown woman. So he needs immature children to be able to relate to that's the profile but that's only an allegation and the person in question hasn't personally examined him and i have never talked to him and i haven't seen the evidence to, to be presented and he's presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt okay let's go to a few public comments Shannon writes about a month ago, nobody wants to answer this. How do you get married with a fake ID? Anybody that has been married knows you need birth certificates too. Good point, because um, that's how it works. You not only need um, identification, but I guess, you know, that's the story that they're sticking to. I really and truly do not believe that the marriage was was legitimate or even a marriage. I believe that they were separating ties with their careers, their music careers, and they signed an agreement. And I guess they called that a marriage um, that they had prior to. That's what I believe. Lisa says, in his preteen years, two of my uncles were R. Kelly's basketball coach, and in the late 80s, he and I attended the same high school. Although he was always musically inclined and talented, he always had a childlike spirit and never really transitioned into mature adulthood. If the accusations regarding his sister is true, it can possibly explain why 
and how he never developed a consciousness about any allegated inappropriate behavior with young women and women in general. And I truly believe that as well. This is some of the things that I talked about um, in another podcast on the channel. And it said, why did she not, how did she get away with doing this and being told that she did it? Even though years had passed, she was the culprit that initiated that situation along with all the other women in the house from Solar Coaster that he talked about. Um, and Trials and Tribulation writes three weeks ago, this was a poor interview when it came to the R. Kelly situation. There were no facts even mentioned. You just didn't know what he was ta even talking about, misquoting an interview to fit his own narrative. And why didn't Judge Joe mention that Aaliyah's mom stood on her word that all the allegations that involved her daughter were in fact lies? Diane told everything that wedding was a public relations stunt for her album. We all know artists have public, public relations stunts to boost streaming and sales. Nobody talks about the bogus certificate with two signatures that aren't Robert's or Leah's signature. So thank you, Trials and Tribulations. So what are your thoughts? What are your views on the podcast today? I think that um, there should be an extension um, before the hearing to determine, you know, what's going to take place in the district of Illinois trial, um, in order to just free him up for at least 10 to 20 years that they were going to convict him on in the sentencing. I know that he was probably looking at 10 to 20. Um, I believe that. So what are your views? Do you think this is going to help save him? Do you think that his saving grace is going to be something of significance due to this? Do you think the courts are going to just still go through with the conviction, May, uh, the sentencing May the 4th, 2022? Let me know in the comment box below. Thank you so much for joining, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate all the love that we get on this channel and we'll keep bringing you true news that is relevant to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we thank you. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.